<coughs> yeah, my phone cut off. My bad. It took me about three minutes to hurry up and try to get this back together. I had to erase a couple of videos, and I got a lot of fucking one, two-minute videos. So I had to find a good 18-minute one that I already got on my YouTube and erase it. But anyway, I left off at talking about, uh, yeah, cannabis. I said it reminded me of his Channel Zero song back in the day when he said, uh, Holy Scripture from Genesis says, "Let there be like now. Let us make man under our image and under our likeness. First of all, who's they? You see, if God was truly a single entity, that's not what He would say. Not the first, you know, He ain't the only person that think that. But still, I'm like, okay, remind me of that. So the we part, I'm like, who the fuck is this we? So then it go, it, it brings that question up again, a question up again, like, okay." This ain't God really speaking to Muhammad, or at least God himself or itself, based on the text. Then who is this we? Is it God and the angels? You know what I'm saying? Because you got people that believe in the alien thing and all that type of stuff too, but, uh, I mean, well, as far as, you know, they say that's what God and, or the angels are at least, but, or demons, but still, I'm thinking like, who, 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 is the weed that was another part that brought up another question in my head but I, I look at it more like um, understanding exactly who wrote the, this particular surah that's the one in the main parts who wrote the surah really that is the main part who wrote the surah Sur or surah and what exactly does this whole entire surah consist of the portions that I've read is that just one little small portion, but within a larger uh, text, the surah is about something completely different or more overarching than that. You know, so that's what I got to understand. But yeah, I wrote them joints down. I'm like, okay, I'm going to read them tomorrow. That's that part. Now, as far as the historical part, now this is definitely off the top because it's been a long time since I talked about this or uh, looked it up because I doc looked it up because I documented it on my Facebook. You know what I'm saying? All my important shit, anything that I think is original, that whatever, I document them shits. I've been doing that for a couple of years, but uh, yeah. Okay, during Jesus' birth, now Jesus is supposed to have died. As far as what I read a long time ago, between 07 to. 09 AD. All right, based on his age, he was what 33 years old. So if he died in 07, he would have had to have been born uh, around 26 BC at least. I think I got it correct. Yeah, around 26 BC at least. If it's 09. Then he would have had to been born around uh, 28 BC, but around that time. Wait a minute, now nah, I'm getting it. Damn, I'm fucking it up. Wait a minute. No, no, no. Uh, Anyway, basically the historical part, during the time of Jesus' birth, one of the Nubian kings, it was a Nubian king and a Nubian queen. I'm not sure if I remember the queen's name. Like I said, I haven't read it so in a, in a long time. But this is during the time when there was a language that existed that's now extinct. And it was a Nubian language and it went extinct around 500 AD, I believe. <coughs> But um, around Jesus' birth, when three kings went to Jerusalem, when I read that part of the story, what I thought to myself is, who exactly was this king? Because it was a guy named Melchior or something like that. So I'm like, this guy came, if he's a king and he came from Nubia, what was going on in Nubia as far as the historical record that exists? That was my question. So I went back, came across somebody named Akinia Dad. Akinia Dad. All right, this person 
So like I said, I forget the queen's name. Hopefully I'm not confusing that as being the king instead of the queen name. But I believe that was one of the names of the king. Akenia died. Because a Nubian king died in this year, 24 BC. It could be 20, I don't know, but it was around the time of the birth of Jesus at least. But a Nubian king died that year and another guy had became king. So Akenia Adad is either one of them. But the point is, one of those kings would have had to have traveled to Jerusalem if this story indeed actually took place. And again, going back to the tri to, to the historical record, Akenia Adad was definitely one of the Nubian kings during that time period with the birth of Jesus. Now, the interesting thing to me is that those people had beef with the Romans around that time. I want to say possibly before that, somewhat before that, but they would they, they are given credit as being like uh, one of the rare kingdoms that defeated the Romans in battle. This is, this is what happened. They defeated the Romans in battle. This is also written about in this language that uh, doesn't exist anymore today. Well, it, it exists, but Nobody know how to translate the language. I forget the fucking name is in the back of my head. Nobody knows how to translate the language. But a lot of the tales dealing with that battle between them and the Romans is written in that language. But I guess, obviously, what is known about that period is that they did defeat the Romans in some big battle. That happened. Again, I'm thinking that was somewhat before the birth of Jesus. I don't think it was somewhat after. But I think that's important, an important thing to find out about because it could give a little bit more background as far as the birth of Jesus and being that this language is not translated, who knows what lies that can be like um, <clears throat> uh, discovered basically. So that's the actual historical uh, or a actual historical period happening during that time. So as far as like my own understanding of Jesus, yeah, my understanding of Jesus, period, and from different fields, of, well, different facts from different fields of thought, you know, that's basically what I think so far. But I still, like I say, this ain't really official. This is just me talking based off the fucking dumb, like the official blog about that. And I probably even shouldn't even make that motherfucker uh, available. But I do it for documentation purposes, though. So that's gonna have the repeat of the Akenia dad but that's not it's official <clears throat> but it's a book that I'm going to read in the far future and it's one of those books that Bill O'Reilly came out with and it's called uh, Death of Jesus he came out with that book a long time ago so I had I don't know I don't think I still got it I left it at one of my sister's houses so it might still be there you know, I couldn't fit it in my book bag before I left. But uh, before I left to go to, where did I go to after that? St. Louis. So, um, yeah, I told myself I'm going to do like a blog series about that book. The Akini of that <coughs> thing is something that I said I was going to bring up. And I'm still going to bring up when I do my blog series about that in the future. That book is more, it's not even no compliment because I don't even, even need the book. But I just felt like it would be more challenging if I included that book, basically. You know what I'm saying? It's like something extra, like a, it makes it more of a, more of a uh, profound experience from my point of view, for me, personally. So that's why I'm going to add that book. But yeah, I'm going to bring that fact up during that time, too. But as far as like this, this, this official blog... When I read those uh, surahs and stuff like that, yeah, I'm gonna include all that t together in that. But that's why I just wanted to talk off the dome and do like a self measurement thing at the same time. I got a whole bunch of other stuff I want to do. Like I said, thank God for social media. That's a raw, a raw, wonderful medium for me to express my thoughts and be creative outside of what needs to be done in practical reality or pra no, 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 no. practical life. So yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Is there anything else I want to say? I don't know. Let me stand here and just think. I don't know. Uh, 
I did record something yesterday. This ain't got nothing to do with this. It was, we was talking about aliens, Travis Walton. And I accidentally raised both videos. But I had brought up something about Pam Reynolds because conversation, well, not the conversation, but, you know, the whole little uh, 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 alien abduction came up and then the life after death came up. So she was a big example that I brought up and I was saying that I had already wrote something about her in this metaphysical addendum document that I got on my uh, Facebook. So anyway, some of the arguments that I got as far as why I believe that story is true, I had wrote them in that motherfucking metaphysical addendum doctrine. Only thing is I brought this up yesterday and it was a good little talk and I erased the shit. So I don't know if I, I don't know how much time I got right now. But I'm definitely gonna go ahead and speak on it. So uh, yeah, we were saying I was telling him about Travis Walton how it happened. And it took place sometime in the '80s. I don't think it was the late '70s. Sometime in the '80s, how he was in the woods, he seen this weird ass shit floating, flo hovering uh, above the trees. They, you know, kind of drove toward it, stopped, got out, looked. One guy got extra curious. That's Travis Walton. He walked closer to this UFO. It struck him with some type of bright beam or flashed it on him at first and then knocked him back. Then when it knocked him back, all those other guys got frightened. He ran back to the truck and sped off. Funny thing is, Travis Walton tried to save them. He was like, he don't think they were scared. He, he felt like they maybe figured that he was already dead because when he was knocked back, he was limp. So, you know, that's, that's his explanation as to why the guys got in their car or the truck, the vehicle, sped off. But he did come back when they came back and it's claimed that Travis Walton was no longer there. So he was gone for about fucking three days and all of a sudden he appeared outside by a phone booth. It became a big news story. He was hypnotized and all that type of shit. When they hypnotized him, he, he was able to remember some of the events that took place while he was in a whole exotic space somewhere. And based on his experience, he's seen a few rooms. He was in a couple of, he walked through a couple of rooms, but the, 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 the UFO itself or the spaceship was transparent as far as the walls. He could see stars, but he was somewhat sedated as well. He was eventually operated on he came across other people before this operation who looked human, but looked more healthy. That's his whole description. It was a big thing for a couple of years. A book came out about it, his book that he came out with about it. And then the whole movie was made after that. We was talking about that. And I was saying that I like that story and I think he's telling the truth. I don't think he's somebody that's looking to be famous. You know what I'm saying? And I gave an example on Montel Williams that came, you know, that, that aired decades ago. And he had like a whole host of people. He had a whole pan panel of people with different stories and different accounts of their experiences dealing with aliens and being abducted. Then he had one guy who was a researcher who spent a lot of his time on the show going into things that took place, but mostly at Area 51. And then some, him and Montel Williams went back and forth as far as like the type of jets or the advanced craft, that's the craft, I can't even say the, the, the advanced crafts that are made, but the knowledge of it is not known to the public, it's classified. It's, it is not long, known, it is not known to the public until later on when it comes out. So he was, Montel Williams was trying to say like maybe that's some of the technology that he's seeing or people are seeing. You know, that was his main argument. The guy was trying to go into details, blah, blah, blah. But the whole thing is, that guy looked like he was more so defensive. As far as uh, Travis Walton, he gave his take as far as his own experiences, but he didn't look like he was, he didn't seem like more so that he was trying to convince people that he's telling the truth. So he looked like he got a little bit more validity to him. So I'm like, I believe his shit is true. Now, his story again is one of the main most popular stories about the whole little subject with UFOs. 
So it's, it's next to the Betty and Bernie story that took place way before Travis Walton. You know, that's like another popular story. Now, <laughs> as a side thing, I was saying that I trust those tales from like the 90s and beyond in reverse chronological order. Not all of them, but I would trust like I give more thought to those than the ones that comes out nowadays, especially in the 2000s up into the present because a lot of shit that I've seen on the internet throughout the years regarding that phenomenon is fake to me. And I'm like, why the fuck is they doing that? So I was, t I was like, look, <coughs> I was like, um, it's just like hip hop. If you're a hip hop head or you're somebody that really like the music or whether you participate, observe or do both, it don't matter. <laughs> whether you have a whole bunch of notoriety or you don't. The whole thing is you got this thing that, 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 that you, you got a certain type of caricature or a person or groups or those with certain intentions that are labeled as culture ver vultures. All right, you know, obviously some of those people already work in the industry and they're big people and they're also uh, consisting of those behind the scenes as well. But the whole thing is people that listen to hip hop such as myself, we got a lot of people that get irritated with that type of shit and they point it out and they call them culture vultures. It's a similar sentiment as far as the alien phenomena, all the fake ass shit that they got across the fucking internet, YouTube and all of that. I'm like, now me, I believe in that type of shit. I believe that's real. That's just me. But I also think, you know, it's not something that should be trivial. So when I see a whole bunch of people putting fake shit out there, it's irritating. It's like you taking away from the veracity of, not the veracity, but fucking the legitimacy of the subject itself. It's like you making the mockery out of it. You know what I'm saying? So I brought that up. Uh, then went on to the near death experiences. So I was talking about Pam Reynolds. And I'm like, okay, her story is significant to me. I had also included that when I wrote Metaphysical Addendum. What I thought was interesting is the fact that you had at least 20 doctors that participated in this surgery in some way, shape, or form. Her recollection is that she memorized and pinpointed the exact tools that were used, but then she also recalled certain songs, which the exact names are also out there on the internet, or the, the name is out there on the internet. Now this occurred while she was greatly sedated. Now supposedly, it was like almost to the point where she's basically dead, brain dead. That's how sedated she was. And she had these clicking modules in her ear, all right? Now, she's laid on the bed, the operating table, face, face. She's basically laid out on her back. That's the position of her body, all right? So she's facing the ceiling. Now, based on her recollection, all of this shit that she observed and witnessed around her, She's seen it from the vantage point of looking down from the ceiling. So in the opposite direction. And I was saying the reason why that fucking stood out to me, and again, I'm using the term exotic. And exotic detail is because, based on my understanding, the only reason why we see is because of the optical nerve, right? That's directly behind the fucking eyeball. And it's kind of connected to the brain. That is what translates the imagery around us, right? So we can see, and we can give color and all that extra shit. You need that. So it is like one of them old ass fucking TVs back in the day with the big ass back. You know what I'm saying? Look at that as the the, the frontal part that's attached to the back of the eyeball. You know what I'm saying? The optical nerve. It's the same thing. You need that to translate imagery around you. The reason why her story stands out to me is because. See, she not only seen, she didn't see laying on the bed, she's seen from the ceiling. So she's not within her body itself, hence out of body experience. And she's greatly sedated. And her heart rate is lowered. <coughs> so I was like, wow. You know what I'm saying? It's like one thing to experience something to where you feel some, you feel a sufficient of amount of consciousness but a large intensity sensation of vibration 
although everything is pitch black around you. Eyes closed and being operated on. And then also maybe also being able to still hear music around you and recall all that. That's another thing. Visually witnessing something at the same time, but from, and not even the adjacent, but the opposite position, that is a big highlight. So I'm like, okay. <clears throat> as far as the critics, when I, re when I reread about this years ago, when I was like, let me put my own shit together about this. And I read about it, reread about it or whatever. I'm like, I want to hear what other people got to say who disagree with the story. Some skeptics, you know, some atheists or something. You know, I'm like, I'm, I know because, you know, some of them provide some really good skeptical arguments. I'm not saying arguments that I follow or parrot. I'm just saying some shit that I read and I was like, okay, well, that make a little sense. You know what I'm saying? That's something to think about. That's the point. Something to think about. So I read some of this shit. One was like, um... The tools that she described, she could have had knowledge about them. Um, and basically just re-described it or whatever. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, possible. But again, this is, you know, after I processed it, I'm like, okay, that's somewhat possible, but that's not enough. You know what I'm saying? Like if a person comes with that, they have a half-ass argument because you got the other aspect, which is the music itself. And I had brought up the fact that I consider that to be live. So that's definitely more in the moment. You can't have a conversation with a person and say, okay, well, I played this music then. And then you're viewing this or witness, witnessing this from the vantage point of the ceiling. And even though you had at least 20 doctors, at least, years later, none of them have came forth and contradicted what she has claimed. None of them came forth and said, well, we told her this is the music that we played. That'd be, that aspect itself would be something easy to point out. If you mention this song before surgery, or we're going to end up playing this, or you mention I played this after surgery. You know what I'm saying? If any one of those doctors mentioned that they played that song during surgery to her post this operation, any one of them would have came out and just said, no, nah, I told her what song it was. None of them did that. Years later, all the way up until this point. So therefore, people such as myself who believe in the story, because when I thought about this, that's what I came up with. I'm like, wait a minute, they didn't refute this part. Okay, you may be able to just, you know, question or throw uh, suggestions out there and people may take to it and be like, wait a minute, oh, well, the suggestions regarding the whole tool aspect. People may take to it and be like, oh, that makes sense. You know, maybe, you know, this was communicated to her or she researched what type of tools that were used in a surgery like that. So that's how she came up with that. All right, you can have that. But you would have to explain away the bigger meat, which is the music part. How the fuck did she recall that? Which is more live. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's momentary. Momentary. Mom momentary. It's not like she's a famous person that had an operation. And the operation was documented, so everything that went on, she was able to find out after the fact. You know what I'm saying? In today's time. Nah, hell no. Nah. If you can't explain how the fuck did she know what songs were played, then you can't refute that. Uh, you call it a phenomenon. You can't even, you can't refute that. You gotta explain that part away. If you can't explain explain that away, then you don't have enough logic and reasoning to cast a doubt on that story. And you know, say so I was saying how you know, at least in my dome when I processed this, I felt like I took another bone out the motherfucker. Like, wait a minute, let me take something else real quick. And then also, you gotta point out why the fuck did no doctor come forth and say? She's lying about that music. Or I told her that we played that. None of them did that shit. Get out of here. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's definitely true. So I brought that up. And let me see. Um, <clears throat> That's all my shit, by the way. That ain't nobody else's. But let me see. Uh, Pam Reynolds. Yeah, that's it. This is what 
20 something minutes so far, I'm gonna leave it at that. So I gotta have something to listen to before I go to bed. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, it's been an interesting ass fucking day, boy.